Joe Kuhn here, your reliability man, bridging the gap between best practices and your reality. Today's lean driven reliability topic of the day is who is reliability man and do we need him? Uh, I've been asked this several times in, uh, in chat, so I thought I would uh, send out a little trailer uh, today of, of, of what I'm trying to do and what this channel is all about. First of all, hit subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Hit the alert bell to have those uh, uh, videos uh, pop up in front of you and, and so it's part of your standard work to uh, get a little inspiration from Joe. 90% um, plus of plants are caught between this gap of best practices. Hey, knowing, you know, knowing that they should be able to be at 90% planned work and 30% PDM and 35% PMs and then all the follow-up work associated with that. You should have reliability engineers should be doing planned work by planners. You should be autopsying all failures. Everybody understands what those best practices are, but you're mired in mediocrity because of where you're currently at. Okay, that may be, there may be great reasons for that. Uh, revolving door of leaders, changing business cycles, ignorance of what reliability is by top management, and they go with what they know. Uh, there's no seed money for staffing or to get equipment health back in line. No way you can accept the standard deployment of, a, of about three years with upfront cost. Uh, just can't handle that in today's uh, economic realities. Uh, you just don't know where to start and early obstacles set you back. You know, uh, this is very, very common. You know, uh, a lot of locations, what they do is they seek quick fixes. They try to buy something. They try to buy a new software package to manage their CMMS system or to make it all visual. And as you've heard from other videos, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, it's all about the culture, not about these tools. So. Uh, but everybody wants that quick fix. That's, that's today's 2019 reality. You know, I've been in manufacturing for 32 years. I failed a lot, I've learned a lot, learned even more, uh, and I've succeeded. There's no, you, no reason for you to repeat my broken road to understanding the secrets to creating a reliability culture. There's no reason to repeat that. You know, my career well, uh, lasted 32 years uh, as a practitioner in a large aluminum rolling, casting, smelting, coating facility. E very equipment intense. It would be considered heavy industry by most. We spent, you know, upwards of $100 million uh, a year uh, on, on R&M at, 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 uh, at the, the facility where I spent most of my time. The, uh, and you know, I actually also missed uh, uh, power generation and mining is also some experience I've had. I started off as a mechanical engineer, only worked there for three years. I took an on shift production leadership assignment. Uh, I've been a superintendent twice, that may be around uh, 60, 70 people worked for me at that time. I've done that twice, like I said, those were production roles. I've been a manager. Um, three times, and those are roles with about three to 400 people, but you had production, uh, quality, uh, maintenance, safety, uh, accountabilities, cost accountabilities, kind of a mini plant for most people, three, 400 people operation would be a small plant. And then I've been a plant manager, VP, general manager, different titles, uh, three times where I had overall response, p &L responsibility for, for locations. And I've been the global director of uh, reliability uh, for a large corporations ser serving 31 locations around the globe. Seen a lot of things, did that for four years. I've had extensive training in Six Sigma, uh, lean and reliability. Results, you know, one, you know, I'll give three of them here. I've had one of the locations I was at, we had a 40% reduction in RM spend. We doubled the OEE at the same time and had the highest equipment health rating in the corporation externally verified. That's one result. Another result, we saved $9 million in RMM, RM, uh, in about 18 months. 
and uh, four and a half million of that was reinvested into the equipment to get the equipment healthy. So we didn't wait to get it healthy first. We didn't ask for the four and a half front up front. We saved it along the way. And if you listen to my other videos, that's that's how, that's the lean approach: eliminate the waste first, ask for reinvestment. And then a third result is, and this was in my global role, $115 million saved in 18 months um, uh, deploying these practices around the globe. A lot of other people involved. I was just a facilitator. I just uh, helped piece it together and educated a little bit, but a lot of great people made those results happen. Uh, I've learned how to speed results uh, with no upfront investment by uh, combining my lean and my reliability uh, training and expertise and things I've learned from other people. Uh, again, you know, I've said reliability is about a culture change. Uh, there's more than one person in a culture. I happen to be there. I happen to be one of the key leaders. Uh, several times the, the, the top leader sponsor of an event, but I also uh, depended on a lot of great people uh, to help me and, and, uh, and learn, help me learn from my mistakes. Slap me around, tell me when I did something wrong. You know, uh, can this process work for you? Um, I don't know. You know, if, if you want to contact me, you have my email uh, below. Uh, I will respond to that. We can talk live. We can talk via uh, email, uh, chain letter, going back and forth. Or we can set up something live, uh, live consulting at your location. The... Um, you can, if you want, just to listen to the videos. That's great too. And I know most people will fall into that category where they're just trying to learn a few tricks, a few secrets uh, that I've accumulated over 32 years. And I am in enthusiastic about selling, about uh, sharing those ideas, not selling, sharing those ideas uh, to make manufacturing great. Thank you. Bye.